Hello and welcome to another Magic the Gathering draft video. It's Al here with you and this is how to draft MTG. We're talking Streets of New Capenna. It's coming out on Arena very, very soon this Thursday. I wanted to go over some of my predictions for the format, how things are going to play out, give you a little food for thought, maybe give you uh, an idea of what to expect as you uh, start to approach the format, and I'd love to get your thoughts as well. So uh, without further ado, let's get into it. Here we go. So these format predictions are, uh, you know, not uh, necessarily meant to be 100% correct, but uh, I think it's fun to sort of take a stab at what's going to happen in the format. Um, but really, I want to encourage you to think about the format on a macro level in terms of how it's going to evolve from uh, week one to week two to, you know, towards the end of the format. Um, so by all means, uh, please do uh, chime in. Uh, in the comments below with uh, with your thoughts uh, in terms of what you think is going to happen in the format. Maybe you think I'm I'm uh, totally off base on some of these predictions or, or maybe you have some of your own. Please do click like and subscribe as well. It does help the channel a huge amount. Uh, I got three main predictions for you and uh, we're going to start with number one. Mana fixing will be very undervalued early on in the format. Uh, you're going to see players with four or five color decks uh, bashing your, your face in with uh, whatever good rares uh, and multicolor uncommons they can get their hands on um, because players are not going to be taking the good mana fixing high enough. And uh, if you're not familiar with the mana fixing in this set, please do go check out my uh, Streets of New Capenna Draft Primer, the second uh, chapter of it being all about mana fixing. Uh, the best mana fixers are, of course, the cycle of rare tri-lands, the cycle of common dual lands, the cycle of family three-color sacrifice lands, and any good cards that produce treasure. Um, so I, I believe that all of these cards will be picked, with the, probably with the exception of the rare lands, picked too low early on. You want to be taking these with your first, second, third, fourth picks, I think, quite often. Uh, and until players start doing that, uh, especially in week one, the, the players that uh, that are valuing the lands highly are going to have a ton of them, and they're going to be able to play any rares they open or get past and have super powerful decks. Um, some of the less awesome but still good mana fixing out there is is you know some of the lesser treasure cards like Big Score, uh, the cycle of family creature fixtures where you can exile them to upgrade your lands. Uh, and something like Ominous Parcel. These these cards are not super high picks, but I still feel like they're going to be undervalued, and uh, you should be taking them higher than you think. So that's what's going to happen in week one of the format. Mana fixing will be super undervalued, so uh, look out for that. Number two, one or two decks will be better than the rest. Well, this is kind of like a, a common prediction, I guess. Uh, there's usually a best deck in the format. But um, if we're thinking about Streets of New Capenna uh, in terms of drafting a two-color pair, so for example, uh, white-blue, I know there's three-color families and all that, but I think strategically we want to draft a two-color pair and then splash one or both of the adjacent colors in terms of those families. So if we're in white-blue, we could splash... Uh, green and be sort of a broker's style deck and and or we could splash black and be an obscura style deck so in that way this format is really a five deck format if we're thinking about the allied color pairs white blue blue black black red red green and green white there's only five real archetypes in the format as opposed to uh, the 10 that you would normally see in, in a regular set. So imagine for a second, and uh, I, I'm making this prediction, that red-green and green-white are going to be a little bit better than the other three. Uh, I actually think that's going to be the case, but imagine that truly is the case. Then uh, starting your draft in the color green obviously is going to be super important. So uh, whether or not I'm right about this particular color combination, I do believe that there will be one or two decks uh, that are far superior, and finding this out early 
and therefore knowing which color we want to start in in the draft is going to give us a huge advantage over the first week or two, uh, especially you know once once the decks get a little more figured out. So if we use uh, Strixhaven as an example, which was only a few sets ago, but this was another um, five-deck format. There were only five actual archetypes uh, in the set. The only ones that were truly worth drafting were either Silver Quill, which was white-black, or some combination of blue-green Quandrix and or blue-red Prismari, which means that you only ever wanted to start with a white card uh, or a blue card uh, at the start of the draft for the most part, unless we're talking about uh, really, really good rares. You, you always want to steer into either white or blue. So look out for some kind of pattern like this in Streets of New Capenna. I think it's going to exist. I'm going to be making a video about it when I find it, uh, but, uh, but keep your eyes open for that. And finally, my prediction number three, commons will be most important late in the format. So once everybody figures out how good the fixing is and they start taking it appropriately, we will no longer be able to draft crazy three, four, five color decks. It's going to come down to drafting those allied color pairs and supporting them with splashes where possible. Um, people are going to know what the good rares are. They're going to know what the good uncommons are. And, and we're not going to be able to exploit that anymore. So the decks that are going to stand on their own and be the most consistent towards the end of the format are going to be the ones with the best commons because of course we're going to be able to see those commons more frequently in packs during the draft uh, and again i'm going to make a uh, a prediction here that i think green white and red seem to have an advantage uh at least uh, as i'm looking at the spoiler over the other colors in terms of their commons i mean we've got inspiring overseer in white and jewel thief in green which are just way way above rate for commons red's got a one mana deal three removal spell and uh, red and green both have access to treasure, which is another source of mana fixing, which is, is going to be very, very valuable in a three-color set, uh, especially when the other colors don't have access to it and the lands become harder and harder to come by in the draft. Having that extra source of mana fixing in treasure is going to, I think, push green and red over the top. Now, I could be wrong about this. Maybe... Um, all the connive commons in white and blue and black uh, are where the power lies. The, the important thing is to try to figure out which archetypes are best supported at common and steer towards those over the lifespan of the format as the fixing becomes more contested and uh, the best cards are known and the best decks are known. I want to steer towards the archetypes that have the best commons. And I believe uh, green, white, and red are those decks. All right. Well, that's going to do it for this video. Uh, please let me know what you think, if you agree with me, if you disagree with me, uh, what you think uh, is going to happen. If you got any hot takes or, uh, or predictions for the format, please do let me know in the comments below. And uh, we'll see you real soon for some more draft content in Streets of New Capenna. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.